All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do today is we're specifically going to look at uh, how to draw isometric sketches. We're going to draw this cube, and then we're going to draw this rectangular prism, and then we're going to finish up with this cylinder. In order to do a good isometric sketch, what you need first is you need a pencil and a pen. Now, what I'm going to do specifically is I'm going to uh, use a Sharpie to do some of my sketches just so that it shows up on this paper nice and clear. However, uh, I recommend you do this with a pencil first and then come back with your heavy lines with a pen or a fine tip marker. For now, just making sure that we can see this, I'm going to lightly sketch them or the best I can um, using thin lines with the Sharpie and then coming in and make those lines thicker later on. We'll see how this goes. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about isometric sketches. So before we get started on this too much, I want you to have read activity one to one or understand what isometric sketches are. Um, that way when I start talking about front, right, and top, you know what I'm looking for um, and we're not necessarily too concerned about my vocab. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this center point right here, the very point, first point between my front, right, and top, where that corner is at. And we're going to use isometric paper, so we're going to put a single dot where this corner is at. So from here, what we're going to do now is look at what is the length of this cube. Now, I've already measured the, this length of this cube to be uh, one inch, and the spacing on this, uh, this graph right here, this paper I have, is a half a quarter inch mark so one triangle here is a quarter inch in length and so when I uh, draw my scale here if this is an inch and these are in quarter inch I'm gonna go down two three four lines alright and this allows me to draw it to a one to one scale so when I get done with my sketch it should be the same approximate dimensions as uh, my cube right here. Okay, so we got our front line right here, we're going down. Now let's go up to the left and then up to the right. So we're still an inch, so I'm going to go one, two, three, and four, and then down one, two, three, and four, and then over one, two, three, and four. All right. Like I said, I really recommend you do this with a pencil, that way uh, your sketch lines you can erase or make neater but make sure we can see this, I'm doing it in marker. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we got this front side, so I'm gonna go ahead and label this front. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this right side. So what we're gonna do is this length right here is another inch, so we're gonna count four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom side. This bottom side right here is still an inch, so that's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we've got our right side, we've got our front, now we need to take care of our top. Our top is still an inch by an inch, so it's still going to be one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and we have our top right here. Okay, so one thing we need to do from here at this point is put our dimensions in, so this is a one inch cube, so we have one inch by one inch by one inch. There's our length, width, and depth. Or, or sorry, it would be our width, height, and depth. Okay, and now the last thing we need to do is add our shading. So if I put on a light bulb right here, ding, light bulb, what would be the brightest? And the brightest would be this top side right here, so I'm going to leave it completely alone. What would be the, the next brightest or the next lightest would be this, I'm going to say this front side right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do cross hatching one direction. The right side here is going to be the darkest and so what we're going to do is we're going to cross hatch one direction and then we're going to cross hatch the other direction. Okay, you can add in some more if you like to really get the definition of that shape out there. And this is where having a pencil comes in nice and neat. Okay. So we got this one inch cube done. How would we do this next part? Well, we need to figure out what the front side is. 
And so what I would consider the front side is to be this front piece right here because it's got more definition or more detail than this right side, or what I've picked is right, and definitely a lot more than the top. So what I've done is I've chosen this is the front, this is the right, and this is the top. You could make the argument that you could do front, right, top here, but for this one right here, I'm just gonna do front, right, and top. Okay, I've already measured this one. This is two and a quarter inches down. So if we're gonna use two and a quarter inches down, we're going to measure down nine squares. So one, two, three, four. That's one inch. One, two, three, and four. There's two inches and a quarter inch. Our depth here is going to be, this is half an inch. Half an inch. And there we go. We already have our right side finished. Let's now go to our left side. Our left side has a top dimension up here for one inch, so it's going to be four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. There we go. So we got our front, we got our right. Now let's do our top. All we're going to do is finish out the lines. Same thing we did before, let's add some shading. And so this top is gonna be the brightest. The front side is gonna have some cross hatching. And then the right side is going to be the darkest. Okay. How do we then take this and do an odd shape like this, like a cylinder? And so what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna sketch a, in our pencil because I'm definitely going to have some sketching lines here and we're going to pretend that this thing right now is a square and not only is it a square but the diameter right here is going to be the length of that square so this is one inch across so I'm going to do a one inch square one two three four one two three four so what I've gotten here is a one inch square the length is the same length as here, so it's down nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And there we go. We have our cube. Uh, I say it would be rectangular prism. We now need to shave off the edges to round it out. So what I know is that this is going to cut through the middle right here. It's going to do the same thing in the other direction as well. So what I know is that my the circle of my cylinder is going to touch those four points. And if we just draw a circle, it's going to look wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw an ellipse by connecting these curves. And there we go. So what I've done is taken my circle and drawn it as an ellipse on isometric paper. Because when we look at it this way, it's not a circle, but it's more of an ellipse when I look at it in isometric view. We're going to do the same thing down here, is that we're going to draw these lines coming straight down. And where these touch is where we're going to draw our bottom view at. And we're going to round this out the bottom the best we can. The curvature up here should match the curvature down below. So using some of our sketch geometry we have so far, what we can do now is uh, make our lines a little heavy and dark. So I'm going to come in with a Sharpie now, and I'm going to draw, make this a little darker, go straight down here, straight down here, and then straight across. So what I have right now is a cylinder. 
Probably not the best looking cylinder, but here's where we are. Okay? Same thing we did in the other ones. Let's add some more shading. So the top is going to be the brightest, but then what do we do for our shading down here? And so what we notice is that here is going to be the lightest because it's closest to the light, and over here it's going to be the darkest. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our lines and we're going to match the contour of our object. So since this is rounded, I'm going to be drawing rounded shade lines. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add short ones on the left side because it's not as shaded, right? Okay, and then we're going to add longer ones on the right side, matching that contour the best we can. And we're rounding that whole object out. Now this doesn't need to be perfect, but the contour allows us to see that this is a rounded object. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's how to draw a cube, a rectangular prism, and a cylinder, all in an isometric sketch. What you're going to be doing now is you're going to take some other objects I give you, like this L block for example, and how do we determine what the front view of our L block is? Well, if we look at our L block, we want to be there's no hidden lines in our front, right, and top views. So what I've seen some people do is they hold it this way and they call this the front. The front view looks good. The top view would have no hidden lines. However, when I turn this to the right view, there's some hidden lines back here. I can't see what's going on. So this isn't going to work. However, what if we did this? We have the front, this would be the right, and this would be the top. Hey, that looks like it works. There's no hidden lines. The front view shows most detail. Could we also do something like this? Here's our front, here's our right, and then here's our top view. And I would recommend this as being the most just because uh, maybe personal preference, I find this to be a little bit more, uh, I would say, understanding and pleasing than this would be. Okay, so we've got the L block, and that's going to be the first one you're going to try in your activity today. As you go on and you get more complicated, you're going to introduce hidden lines. And what do we do for hidden lines? So using this window block. What about doing on these pieces as well? And then your rounded column. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. And until then, I'll see you on the next video.